This is a continuation of our cir circular force, and this time we're talking about Newton's law of universal gravitation. So what is Newton's law of universal gravitation? Law of universal gravitation, like any law, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, his universal gravitational law can be expressed as an equation. It's that the force of gravity is equal to big G, m1, m2, over r squared. So what we're saying here is that there's some sort of gravitational constant. So this is a constant. This is a proportionality constant. And big G's value is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, which is a pretty small number, really. And its units are newtons meters squared over kilograms squared. Now, what we're going to find is that the function of the units for a lot of our numbers like this is just to cancel everything else out. So it's going to cancel out the meters for our radius in each of our kilograms so that we're left with newtons, which is the answer we want our force to be in. So don't worry too much about all those icky units. Really focus on the number. That's really what you want to focus on. But G is always, because it's the universal gravitational constant, it is always 16 or 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The two m's are the mass of the two objects. Any two objects with mass are attracted to each other gravitationally. And this r is the distance between them. It is the center to center distance between the two objects. So that's the center to center distance between the two objects. So it's from like the center of the earth to the center of the sun, or something like that. So like we said before, gravitational attraction, dra gravitational force, law of universal gravitation, happens between any two objects that have mass. So a boy and a girl, they have mass. Let's say they are separated by 0.5 meters. Okay, that's pretty close. That's like half a meter stick. So let's see what kind of attraction that is. That's Fg is equal to big G m1 m2 over r squared. So we have Fg is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So notice we're always using that number. The mass of the boy, 80. The mass of the girl, 60. Divided by... 0.5 squared, don't forget to square that, and that comes out to, that comes out to 1.28 times 10 to the minus, newtons, that's 1.28 micronewtons, ladies and gentlemen, that is a force that you can resist. It is not an irresistible force. And if this chick gets any skinnier, that force is going to decrease, not increase. So what if instead we wanted to find the gravitational force between the Earth and the Sun? Okay, because the Earth and the Sun have gravity. They exert a force on it. The sun pulls the earth in. The earth also pulls the sun. Action, reaction. So, But those forces are equal and opposite, opposite. So we calculate it the same way. Fg equals 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. That is not a number you need to memorize. It would be given to you. The mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Again, not a number you need to memorize. Distance between them is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. We need to make sure that we square that. So when we crunch all those numbers, we get 
3.52 times 10 to the 22nd newtons. Now that's a lot larger force than we had before. Let's see if that answer is reasonable. You know, it's always good to kind of use your laws of exponents to see if your answer is reasonable. So we had 10 to the negative 11. We're only going to look at the 10 to this times 10 to the 24th times 10 to the 30th divided by 10 to the 11th squared. So laws of exponents on the bottom, that would become 10 to the 22nd because you multiply those two. On the top, we have negative 11 plus 24 plus 30. So that's 54 minus 11, 10 to the 43rd. When you divide, you subtract your exponents. So 43 minus 22 is 21. So we should have gotten some on the order of 10 to the 21. We got 10 to the 22. So those are very similar numbers. So that is a reasonable answer for our force. So we can see that your gravitational force can be small, like in the micronewtons between the boy and the girl, or it can be very large, like the 10 to the 22nd for the Earth and the Sun. So the question comes up, why is gravity less on the Moon than it is on the Earth? And the reason it, for that lies in the difference in size between the Earth and the Moon. The Moon has a mass of 7.34 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. The Earth has a mass of 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So those numbers don't look hugely different, but if you really look at the exponents, if you really look at the exponents, you see that the Earth is really got a mass that is a hundred times bigger than the Moon does. Okay, yeah, so the radius also changes. So we're using our equation here, Fg m1, m2 over r squared. The mass of the Earth is a hundred times bigger. Its radius, if we actually looked at these numbers, is about three times bigger. So the radius is three times bigger. We're going to square that. So that's like on the order of 10, right? So if we took 100 and divided by 9, okay, 100 divided by 10-ish, that would make the gravity on the Earth about, about, don't quote me, 10 times bigger than that of the moon. So you have to look at the whole thing. Yes, it's a hundred times bigger here, and then we're going to divide by something that's three times bigger, so we're going to square that. So this, you know, if we're going to round it off so we have nice round numbers, this is about 10. A hundred divided by 10 is about 10 times bigger. So that's why gravity on the Earth is bigger than the gravity on the moon.